Hey everybody, welcome back to another video on the Creality CR10 upgrades or modifications. Um, now before I get started, just to let you guys know, this is going to be upgrades that you're going to use on a daily basis. This is not going to be any custom or advanced upgrades. So if you're looking for something like that, uh, stay tuned. I will probably make a video on that. Maybe uh, the dual Z access installation or uh, bed leveling or the octoprint these are some things I have planned in the future so I will probably work on that but today's video is going to cover the basic things that most people will use on a day-to-day -day basis uh, we're gonna go over six things uh, we're gonna go over um, things such as uh, the we, uh, bed leveling wheels um, or knobs and then we're gonna go over the toolkit because if most of you are anything like me when you're working on your printer you tend to put things where they don't belong so this way is a little bit more organized and uh, I'll show you how to make it easier to level your bed and to keep it leveled for a long time how to keep your Bowden tubes from snapping off um, also how to just maintain your printer as far as just what bolts to do and what not also <clears throat> we're going to remove two of the wheels at the bottom uh, due to some recommendations that I had so I want to check that out and see how that works um, also just to let you guys know I have started a new um, group it's called Sandtubes 3D Printing Group because uh, I've noticed most of the people that follow me not everybody has a Creality CR10 printer um, so on that forum you can basically ask any questions you want regardless of what printer you have um, so go ahead and check that out if you want to go ahead and um, join the group just send in a request and I'll go ahead and get it approved um, that's basically it for this and let's go ahead and get started and there they are we got the four leveling knobs right there and then we got the fang right there the dust cap right there and the CR10 uh, control box toolkit which this basically goes on top of stick the tools right there and the spring spacers well, that's what I call them and the actual Bowden clips which are right there so these are just the basic ones that we printed and now it's time to go ahead and get them installed all right so the first three things we're going to install are going to be the most simplest things got the dust cover the Bowden clips and the tool kit that goes right on the control box so let's go and start with the clips and right here basically they just pop right in like so there you go and the next one will go right back here like so and all this is doing is keeping this tube from coming out okay it's like those Chinese finger trap things when you push them in they go and find as you pull pressure to it as you're pulling it it gets tighter and tighter so this white cap right here that you see normally sometimes goes down and your tube pops out but because of this clip it constantly stays up keeping the pressure so this does not come out anymore see there you go for the second part we're going to go and do the dust cap very straightforward just put it like so and just pops right into place and what that does is this thing is built I don't know if you can see it but the opening here is built so it locks into the actual nut right there keeping it stable so it doesn't move or turn or anything like that which I also like then of course you just take your little wire stick it right on top and you're all done okay the third one we're gonna work on 
is going to be the toolkit. Now I just printed these guys. I haven't really cleaned them or anything. I'm just showing you guys what's going on. But basically, just take this part, slide it right on. Got one, two right there. Another one right there. And so on and so forth. So next time you need to do something, there it is. All right, for the next part, what we're gonna do is we're gonna install these leveling wheels, okay? These are very simple. I've already dismantled it. <clears throat> it's very easy, just undo the screw at the bottom, which is this one, and then just pull the screw out, and you can pop the spring off as well. Now, before I get started, uh, <clears throat> in here it's gonna be a two-part. So normally, you have your springs like here. And eventually what happens over time is you're squeezing it and releasing it, squeezing and releasing it, it will become a little loose, like a wear and tear. So they made these, um, they're basically like spacers for the screws. So you put this on, there's already a groove for it, which is the perfect size. So it goes on like this, and you would just slide it under your plate like so, with the spacer on top, and then put the screw through, and then tighten everything up. But me, I don't need it at this point, but I just did this because uh, some of you might need this if you've been printing for a while or whatnot, or you might eventually run into this problem. So I recommend it to use this on an as-needed basis, okay? And you can, I'll put a link to this at the bottom so you can print this out. But <clears throat> moving on, Basically, the wheel is made, so this basically just slides right into it. Just find the right groove, catch it, and just push it in, and it pops right into place like so, okay? So I'm just gonna go and put this back on. So once you've installed the wheel on there, you just do the same thing all the way around. Now one thing I do recommend is try to go to your near hard, uh, nearest hardware store and pick up either one of these or just an extra wing nut like this. And uh, the size that you're gonna need is going to be the 832. And I believe they go by metric, so there. And then this, the other one is again same uh, thread size, eight thirty-two. Okay. So if you have enough clearance for this one, this is what I'd recommend: slide it on. But if you don't have enough clearance, then go ahead and put this on. Now you're probably wondering why am I doing this? Okay, with vibration over time. What ends up happening is shit. With vibration over time, what ends up happening is this part starts getting loose. Like it'll shake, and I'll slowly turn. It'll just unlevel your bed just by a little bit. So by putting this at the bottom, what you're doing is you already have a, uh, a nut in place. So when you put this one right next to it, so if you have two nuts like this. If this one starts moving, once it gets down to this one, uh, it won't move anymore. And that's just gonna hold it in place, giving you a longer bed leveling uh, so you can do more prints. So in, let's say if you just do three or four prints on one and then you level it, this will probably give you six to seven uh, from <clears throat> my experience. So just go ahead and pop this on and it should be good to go. It just depends on which one works for you and how much space you have. The reason I like this one, well, it's a little harder to put on. First of all, I'm putting it on the wrong way. That's why it's not going. Because you can just go ahead and turn it. And once you level it, just make sure it's hand tight, like so. See, the wheel is turning, but notice this nut down here is not. See, it slowly moved right there, but 
for most parts, if you just hand tighten it, the bottom does not move and it keeps it in place. So that's what I would recommend. Uh, but it just depends on the clearance that you have here. Um, if you have enough clearance to put this one on, great. If not, then go ahead and put this one on. Because once this is on, you're really not going to ever take it off unless you're just leveling. So that's my recommendation on that one. For the next part, what we're going to try to do is basically take the plate off. So we're just going to have to undo everything that we just did. So I'll just go ahead and take all of it off. and do that for all four. Now, if you don't feel too comfortable taking the, the plate off, what we're trying to do is go from six wheels that you see down there to three, I'm sorry, to four. Uh, we're gonna remove the middle ones right over there. The reason is uh, there was somebody on my Facebook group and they recommended to only use four because it works better than six and he is apparently a certified engineer. So I'm gonna go ahead and test it out and see how that works. So basically what we're gonna try to do is unscrew down there and hold these nuts, which is right in the middle right there. So if you take this plate off, you can actually access these nuts right there a little bit easier. But if you don't feel comfortable taking it off, uh, I'll show you another way how to do that. So what you're gonna try to do is put something in the back to kind of shimmy it up. Uh, now, if you have a lot of space, then you can probably lay it down on the side. But once it's assembled, you got things over here, over here, and in the back, right there. So I don't really wanna mess with those too much. So what this is gonna do is keep that part clear while I go ahead and tilt this up like so and this way I can get to the screws and the wheels very easily okay so basically what I did here is I'm gonna take a wrench and just stick it right there to hold it in place the nut at the top then you take the allen key that came with the CR10 and just turn it from the bottom until and there is the wheel so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this as spare parts now which is also another benefit so all I'm gonna do is just go and screw this sucker back on here and keep it somewhere where if I ever need to, I can use it again. So there you have it. There's the wheel, all off. Now we're gonna try to do the other side. All right, so here's the second one we just took off. Now there's something I wanna point out to you guys. This is what it looks like underneath. That little dust mites or whatever you're seeing. This is what it is. It's your wheel either being stripped or it's just dust that's collected over time right in here. Okay, so now I got two parts extra. Also guys, when you're down here, you might as well go ahead and uh, hand tighten, not too crazy. The bolts since you have it already picked up just to make sure Everything is good. And you want to do that for all four sides. FYI, this is what I used to shimmy up the, uh, the printer. Who says these spools aren't good for nothing once they're done? So there's another useful tip on how to use these spools. All right, the last thing you guys want to do is go ahead and tighten up all the bolts. Just make sure nothing is loose or anything like that. We're going to check the belts. 
You hear a sound like that, you're good. I already checked this one, this one's pretty tight. And back here, you'll notice right there and right there. I'm gonna make sure those are just a little tight, hand tight, nothing too crazy. And here as well, you got one and two, and you can just use the Allen key for that. Uh, make sure all these bolts here, everything is just good to go. Just tighten everything. If just hand tight, don't go too crazy on it. And if that works for you, uh, that's good enough. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. Um, now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the fang put on um, the one I had printed. Uh, believe it or not, I actually printed the wrong one. So uh, my stock fans wouldn't go on it uh, or mount on it, and that's why I did not put it in the video. But you do see it in the print in the beginning, so for that, I do apologize. Uh, so the dust cap, just make sure uh, we go ahead and get it uh, cleaned out before I put it on. I aerosoled everything. Uh, behind the fan right here, I also took that apart, and there's usually dust that collects back there. So I took that off as well. There was quite a few, uh, or quite a bit of dust back there, so I cleaned that out. Some I actually had to pull off myself. As I've said before, guys, I'm no expert at this. I'm not a professional. I don't do this for a living. Um, I'm just the average guy who works 9 to 5, has a 3D printer, and just wants to help other people that have the same printer. So uh, whatever I learned that makes my life a little bit easier, I'll pass it on to you. The reason I haven't done any advanced upgrades yet, because I know there's a lot of newcomers, and these are just the basic things that you can do that will help you a lot. Uh, maybe in the next video, I'll go and uh, throw on the Dual Z uh, access installation video, or auto bed leveling, or Octoprint. I don't know. We'll just see how it goes. And with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any concerns, comments, please leave them down below. Uh, if you like the video, give it a like. If you don't, then give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more content, go and subscribe. And uh, also, I'm going to start doing something new, guys. Everything that I'm buying here, uh, as far as upgrades and things like that, people keep asking me where I keep buying them from. So I'm going to put links to where you can go get these things. Um, if you want to go there and get it yourself, great. If you don't, then... Uh, you don't have to, so it's really up to you. Um, well, just uh, to sum this up, I hope you guys enjoyed the video on the upgrades. Uh, simple, but very useful. And uh, with that said, guys, just like always, good luck and happy printing.